Yeah, we can't hear you. Still can't hear you. It's too powerful. The Holy Spirit isn't isn't being picked up on the mic. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and do this. Um, do you mind giving me access to share my screen real quick, Mark? Yep. But uh, Rachel and I are so grateful that we get to speak with you guys tonight. Um, we had a lot that we want to share. Um, and so we're grateful that we get to, uh, to be a part of this um, tonight. And so we're going to be sharing about advice and humility. Um, and so I know, I mean, throughout my life, I've, I've needed so much advice, <laughs> as you can probably imagine. Um, I've needed advice when deciding what college to go to, you know, what, what a career path, you know, how to, how to take my classes, like how to um, schedule my time for all of that. Uh, you know, what, what career should I go down? You know, um, deciding to marry Rachel, I need a lot of advice. And even as we're married, we constantly need a lot of advice, you know, just to help us out in our relationship and make sure we're, right, we're on the right track. And so, you know, what I want to stress throughout this lesson is that advice is not just an action that happens, or it's not just another box that you're going to check off when trying to make a decision, right? That's not advice. Um, I mean, it is a part of advice, but it's not advice. Um, but really, advice is a heart. It's a mindset, right, that you have. And before we dive into the scriptures, because I, I think I, I say that because I think it's easy to kind of get into this mentality of like, okay, I just need to go get advice and I need to go do this and that. Um, but you could tell somebody that really wants to get advice. Their heart is just, it's so different than somebody that's like, okay, I got to go do this. Right. Or, you know, it's just reluctant to go in the first place. And um, like I was saying before, I really want to dive in. I really want to just define this for us because I think so many of us come in with different misconceptions of what advice is. Um, and as, just so that there's no confusion, you know, um, I'm going to put the, so the, the Hebrew word for advice and the one that we're going to be looking at a lot in a few of the scriptures is a saw, right? It just means advice. It means advisement, counsel to have prudence with, with the future action. And then the Oxford di the dictionary definition is guidance or recommendation offered with regard to prudent future action. And so if this is what we're basing it off, this is advice, right? It, advice is recommendations on a decision or an action that you're going to make. And then I think it's important to bring this up because, you know, oftentimes we think, you know, um, advice is like, is the word of God, you know, at times, or this is advice is, um, you know, this is just set in stone, right? You have to do what the person's saying. And that's, and if you take that away from this, I hope that you don't, you know, um, that's not what advice is. Advice is exactly what it's defined here. It's, it's a recommendation based on wisdom, based on God's word, um, to really help you make the best decision possible, right? Advice is just that it's advice. And so ultimately you get to make the final decision with whatever it is. You know, you pray about it, you go to God with it. And after weighing all the wisdom that, you're, that you've been given and looking at the scriptures and really going to God with it, then you make your final decision. It's just between you and God. Um, and so uh, I wanted to just preface that, you know, before we start diving into all of this, because I know that advice can be a tricky subject sometimes. And so um, what I want to do is dive into the first point, which is, oh, I went back which is engaging your heart, right? When it comes to advice, you need to understand the heart behind it and you need to engage your heart with it. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> I wanna look at a few scriptures here. And the first one is Proverbs 19, verse 20. Um, Listen to advice and accept discipline. And in the end, you will be counted among the wise, right? So we see here that, you know, not just, you know, accepting the advice, but listening to it, right? And then in the end, God's going to consider you wise, right? And then Proverbs 11, verse 14, 
It says, for a lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory is won through many advisors, right? So we see here that he's highlighting this idea of, of multiple people, many advisors, right? The more people you go to, the more the victory is won, right? It's going to be, it's going to be that much more sure that you're going to win that victory. And so, you know, we see that with advice, there's this element of multiple people to go to. Proverbs 12, verse 15, the way of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice, right? I think that's, I, I want to like, I love this point because I think it's so easy even for me to fall into this, right? It's like, it's, it's so easy to think that my way of thinking is correct. What I think, what I want, or, okay, that can't be right. This is actually right, you know? Um, but actually what this is saying is that a way of fools, they, it's going to seem right to a fool, you know? Um, but when you listen to advice, um, you're going to be wise, right? So, so a lot of this wisdom again, and then Proverbs 13, verse 10, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice, right? So kind of highlighting the same theme throughout, right? And clearly why I look at all these scriptures and all of them are in Proverbs, which is great. Um, but I think why I highlight this is because it shows that God cares about us getting advice a lot, right? He doesn't mention it a bunch of times like this. And this is just a few scriptures, right? There's so many more scriptures that talk about advice in this way. Um, and so if God cares about it, shouldn't we also care about it? But I think it's important to know like, why, why does God care about it so much, right? Like what's the why? Um, and I think it's because someone who seeks a lot of advice is somebody that's humble, right? And it's a person, a person that's humble is teachable. And, you know, we know from, you know, scriptures like first Peter five, five, that God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble, right? So God loves people that are humble and are willing to learn and grow. Um, and that's somebody that's, that's getting a lot of advice. Right. And I think um, oftentimes the people that go and get advice and are humble in that, you know, they have softer hearts, they grow faster, and they rely on God so much more than someone who's prideful and doesn't think that they need any input from anyone. Right. And so, what's your heart towards advice? Right. Are you resistant? Are you reluctant? Why are you resistant or are you reluctant to get advice? Or are you somebody that kind of waits? And it's like, okay, if somebody suggests advice to me, then I'm going to like, you know, kind of present my, my own side of it, but I'm not going to go after it. I'm not going to really, you know, um, go after this advice. What is your heart towards it? Right. Do you have that humble heart? You know, um, if you're anything like me, um, and I don't know how many people there are, but I'm very naturally independent. Um, and so, you know, like I mentioned, I need a lot of advice and I continuously need advice because I think I, I have this struggle with getting advice at times. And I'll tell you that growing up as a, as a young disciple, um, I learned quickly that I need a lot of help um, and I still need a lot of help. You know, even now, almost 10 years as a disciple, God is still teaching me uh, that I need others in my life to help me for sure. And I think one of the ways that he's exposing that and showing me that is through my marriage right now. And so as many of you guys know, Rachel and I just got married about four months ago. Um, and we've been, we were engaged for about like five months, um, dated for like a year and a half, and we're friends for seven plus years. And along the way, the whole time, I've needed advice with everything. Um, and so now when we, we first got married, I think, um, I feel like sometimes there's a spectrum of people. You got the people that think, okay, I got it. I got it all. I'm good. You know, I don't need any help with it. Um, I actually figured that I would, you know, things would be different and I didn't know much because obviously we've never been married before. So I kind of prepped myself, um, knowing that this would be new. Um, but God, I think, continues to, to hum, keep me humble by showing me that I, I know really nothing, <laughs> you know? Um, and I mean, not that I don't know anything, 
but this that I need to be flexible to learn. You know, I think if I wasn't flexible to learn, um, this would be a lot different of a story because this is something completely different than what I've been used to for 24 years of my life, right? And if I was going to think it was, and if I was going into it thinking, you know, I knew what was what was going on or what I was doing, it would be that much harder to learn from my mistakes, you know? And so, especially uh, because Rachel and I think so differently, um, we're on almost opposite ends of the spectrum, you know, just in our, the ways we process situations, the way we, you know, uh, work through uh, difficulties, you know, and um, I would say that we've been uh, learning just how valuable it is to have someone give an objective point of view, you know, especially when you're going through something tough and, and you guys aren't seeing eye to eye, you know, I'm sure you guys have been there before, right? Maybe it's a friend or a, a family or a relative or, or just somebody in general that you're close to and you guys are, are butting heads and you're not seeing eye to eye, it can be so helpful to have somebody just come in who has an objective point of view, who's just going to give you um, good feedback, you know, and it's going to point you back to God, you know. Um, and even in those heated moments where we're not seeing eye to eye, you know, we've really been trying to pull other people in to help us. And because I think there's a bunch of times where one of us has to be like, all right, things aren't, it's not, we're not seeing eye to eye, things aren't working right now. Um, and so we need to go talk to somebody. And so there's been a, there's been a lot of times that either her, she'll initiate that or I'll initiate that. But I think that's been such a, such a helpful thing, um, in different moments. And I think the key isn't necessarily the issue, but it's how each of you handle the issue, right? Or handle the resolution. If issues come up um, and it's only, hey, this is you and you're thinking, um, and you're like, I'm good with that. I don't need anybody else to come in and give me perspective, then nothing will change, right? If you're like, if it's just you and you're thinking, it's gonna be the same issues that come up, right? You're not gonna grow, you're not gonna change. But if you humble, out and pull someone else in, I promise you'll start to see character change. And we've definitely been seeing so much change just from doing that little thing um, of just pulling someone else in, getting feedback, you know, how can I grow? And I think God blesses the humble, those that humble themselves and decide to put him first and not their own wants or their own desires or what they think is right. God blesses that so much more than you, you could think. And you know, um, it's funny because we've talked with a bunch of married couples before, and I, I've noticed this common thread that all of them say that have helped them in their marriages. The, the common thread has always been advice. They always have other couples in their lives that, they, that help them and things like that. And so I think that's such an interesting dynamic. If that's how it is within marriage, then, you know, I know many of you aren't in marriage, but you know, the same idea applies, right? There's something that God is doing there that he wants us to be connected with other people that can really help us to see ourselves clearly. Um, and, you know, I think we, like I said, we all have issues, but who are you bringing in to help you and give you wisdom, right? Who are you bringing in? Is it anybody, right? Um, even if there isn't necessarily an issue with you and someone else, I think you want to be careful with that too, right? Does your heart reflect someone who thinks that their way is correct when they're making decisions or that God's way is correct, right? Like I want to really pull somebody else in because I really want to know what God wants me to do. You know, is there anyone else involved in your decision-making process or is it just you and you alone? Now, uh, Rachel's going to come and share more just on having that heart to give for advice. Hey, um, I'm going to share a scripture in Psalms 147, verse 6. It's not going to be on the PowerPoint. Um, so the Lord supports the humble, but he brings the wicked down into dust. Um, wow. I think that's so powerful that like we see that when we are humble, like the Lord supports, you know, supports the one that is humble. But when we're wicked and we're not being humble, then 
um, we're, we're humbled that we're, we're like put back into our place, um, into dust. So, um, you know, I know we all make decisions and many of them, many times we can make them alone. Um, and I know I had a lot of times in my life that I just made decisions on my own and chosen to, I had to learn to seek advice. Um, the scripture was Psalms 147 verse six. So I had to learn how to seek advice because it felt really weird to me at first. And I felt, it just felt so foreign. Like I wasn't used to asking for help or, um, I put a lot of weight on my shoulders to, to kind of already know and feel like, oh, I just need to figure it out. Um, and that's just like the mindset I had growing up. Um, so I had to really learn to get used to asking for advice, to get comfortable with making mistakes along the way and learning to talk about it um, and learning really what advice really means, like what um, all that Emmanuel was defining. So when it when I try to ask for advice, <laughs> there'd be many times that um, after sharing, I would I would I would say like, I still feel like um, asking for approval or to get permission because that's what it felt like for me. Like, even though I was sharing, I still had to like work on my heart to understand like what advice really means, what it is. And, you know, Manny shared that it's it's seeking um, guidance, um, you know, of rec some recommendations others can share. But then at the end of the day, ultimately, you know, I do have my own choice. You do have your own choice. Um, but it's important to consider, you know, with, with the way we see in the scriptures, how we're called to listen and not to be fools. And um, so I had to like work on that mindset and be real about it. Um, it needed to take humility from me to just even share that honest thought that I was feeling with my discipler, with my friends, um, the close people around me that would give me advice. So I needed to really just work at that in <laughs> my heart and where I was, how I was thinking or, you know, where my heart was at. Um, Cause, and in general too, in my life, I just wasn't good at asking questions. I just wasn't good at um, vocalizing help. And at times I can still sort of struggle with that. You know, I'm still learning. Um, and in Proverbs 14, verse 12, it says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. Um, I don't know if I have that, the full version. I think there's other versions that say like, there is a way that appears right to, to the man, to, to yourself, like um, for oneself, it, it can seem right for me in the way I'm thinking, but then really like in the end, it leads to death when I'm not considering others um, advice as well. And admitting, just being humble about like where I'm coming from and um, to see myself is, was helpful. You know, I think we admitting humbly has helped me see myself clearly and brought me peace to be able to like feel lighter to actually get off like what I'm feeling and thinking when it came to asking for advice. Um, but it really cleared up like my mindset from what I had thought it was and how I felt about it um, to really just being taught, to really just being um, able to embrace and love like what, you know, correction. Um, because the scriptures do say like those, like how it's it's foolish to hate <laughs> correction. And so um, to consider myself like, wow, like I was being a fool and I want to love correction. I want to be able to love what God loves and to grow in this mindset. Um, that, that does take humility, you know, that, that first step and just drawing out the heart of where you're coming from. Um, and so I just really had to get myself in situations where I would actually be able to, you know, just share like, hey, I need help. <laughs> or like, hey, so this is what I'm thinking. And I would share my thoughts or kind of my plan or what I'm, what's going to happen. And then I'm like, but I'll say like, but I'm not so sure, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I just want to be able to get help on seeing it in a, you know, a different light. Maybe I'm missing something. And those are some ways you can approach those conversations and getting help with how to phrase it. Because I had a hard time figuring out, well, how do I even phrase it? And I had to even get advice about that, get advice about how to talk and get ask questions and get help. Um, even with when I started dating Emmanuel, I had to learn to ask more questions and get help. And 
Um, you know, just because I had dated in, in the kingdom before dating Emmanuel didn't mean like I knew everything or I didn't know what I was doing or, um, I still needed help with thinking right about, um, about my boundaries, about dating in, in like a godly way, you know, and, um, or even like, I didn't date in the world, but you know, I, I didn't have that to compare it to, but the reality is like, I have just never even really known like what it really meant to have a godly relationship like for myself because of like what I grew up with seeing we we just see like worldly relationships um so it is very different and I'm, and I'm thinking of just other things too that doesn't necessarily have to be just dating I'm thinking about conflict re like um resolving conflicts you know like in the world is so different from the way they resolve conflicts or they can easily just like um feel like, well, I don't have to say anything or just kind of have attitude and just, there can be so much like um, tension, but even just resolving conflict, like God has something to say about that. And God has examples of, um, you know, guiding us how to handle those situations. And it does take humility. Um, so it's, it's a lot about just changing the way you think, changing the way, um, you know, I thought about just some of these things that I needed to bring myself to these scriptures to help change my thinking on this. Um, sorry. So Jesus just wants us to grow in how we perceive advice, um, what it actually takes and how it is actually super helpful. And it shouldn't be something like that's hostile either. You know, it, it shouldn't be something that's, um, that it feels like you're asking for permission or, um, there's like this a sense of approval from someone else. Um, I think of Romans 12 verse two. It says, Romans 12 verse two reads, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And that's um, the NLT version. I just like switching it up here and there because you know sometimes it's nice to hear it in a different way, but um, I just love that so much. Like God really wants us to be transformed the way we think and that's repentance you know he wants us to change the way we we process some of these things that we think we may know and the way we've decided or just been living but really like there are other ways to handle it in a godly um spiritual and biblical way that will bring us um peace and it will be pleasing and good and perfect now i'm going to pass it back to manny amen um thank you rachel that's such a good point you know um, I think it is, it is like a mind change, you know, um, like we were saying, you know, so much of advice is, is the heart, you know, and, and is, um, it is a mindset, you know, that you have about, about it, you know? Um, and so, um, kind of jumping from that, right. We, we talked about, okay, the heart of advice is humility and being humble. And why does God value advice and what is our perspective on it. Um, now, I think the, the next step we want to do is um, engage your life with it. Um, and so this point is going to be a little more practical. Um, I know Rachel has given some great practicals already. Um, and so what we want to do is really, I think we were, when, when we were kind of talking about this and looking at, okay, what is advice, right? Um, I think it was just helpful just to like lay it out like very plainly, what is advice and what is advice not, you know? Um, Cause I think, like I said, I think a lot of times we come in with our own, um, you know, hurt. Maybe sometimes it's, it's stuff that's happened in the past when it came to, you know, talking and being open with someone else and maybe they hurt you or, you know, maybe you're just naturally mistrusting, right? Or, or different things. Um, and I think we come in a lot of times with, with that trauma, with that hurt, um, to getting advice within the kingdom. And I think it's important to uh, kind of address those different fears and things like that. Um, and so we kind of broke it up into this. What is it not? What is, what is it, right? Um, and to start off, right, advice, we're going to start off with the what is it not, right? Start off a little harder and then go into the nice stuff. Um, but advice is not being fearful of the person's position or their response. You know, I, I think um, this is such an important part because I think a lot of times we, we do think, okay, this person, you know, this person is, 
is a you know is a leader or you know how are they gonna how are they gonna look at me after I say this you know um, and I think we need to be careful with our rationale behind getting advice and 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 refer even sometimes we refrain because you know of how they're gonna respond or how we think they're gonna respond we almost anticipate you know um, what somebody's gonna say before they actually say it you know um, and so do you only go to, to get advice to get advice from people that you know will tell you what you want to hear right or do you avoid getting advice at all because you're afraid of what someone is going to tell you or how they're going to perceive you right i think we got to ask ourselves these questions um i think what helps me is two scriptures uh second timothy four verse three says you know people will gather to hear what their itching ears want to hear right and that scripture is pertaining to false doctrine. Um, but I think the, the same idea applies that there's people and people naturally innately want to just hear what we want to hear. You know, we're, we're, we're self-gratifying people, you know? And I think uh, we need to recognize that about ourselves and recognize, okay, am I just going to someone because they're going to tell me, hey, this is, you know, tell me what I want or they're going to tell me the truth. Tell me it in love and um, tell me what I need. You know, I think that's important. Um, and then 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8, it says, and this is Paul addressing the Corinthians after the, his first letter. You know, um, he says, even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and, and so were not harmed in any way by us. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what alarm what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done, right? I think that this is the heart and the mindset you want to have, right? If you, if you come into it like, okay, well, how are they going to respond? And you kind of come in already a little guilty, you know, of like what's, you know, of what you did, what you're going to get advice on, you know, or something like that. I think you want to have the heart of, no, I just want to see justice done, right? That's why I'm getting advice. I'm getting advice because I want to do what's right before God's eyes. And I just want justice to be done, whatever it is, right? Whatever is told to me, I need to be humble and recognize, look, God, um, God wants the best for me, you know, and he's not going to harm me. And so I think you want to come in and almost change your mindset um, to, re to just reflect that. Like, okay, it's not, I'm not going to take it personal, right? But I'm going to, I'm going to do what God wants. I think Satan wants us to think, oh, you know, I can't talk to a, I can't talk to a Mark or a Rob, or a Hannah, or somebody, because, because they're a leader, right, um, what are they going to say, you know, what are they going to think of me after I tell them, you know, um, Satan wants us to believe that, you know, but that's just not the truth, as someone that has been on both ends of both giving and getting advice, and has also been in leadership, I, I want to tell you that, um, that whenever somebody com can comes to me and tells me something personal, right, or is trying to get advice from me, I'm never judging them. I'm never judging them. In fact, I'm always encouraged because they told me, you know, and they want help on it, right? How can I, how can I, you know, think any way or weird way about somebody that wants help, you know? I want to help them, you know? And I think, um, I think I also recognize for myself too, it's like, okay, I'm messed up too, you know, and I need help with things as well you know? And so, um, I think we need to, we need to like smash that, you know, thinking that Satan wants us to believe, you know, that we can't talk to certain people because of something, you know? Um, and so now Rachel's going to come and share some more input on, um, what advice is not. All right. So when I hear Manny share this, you know, about like, um, the advice is not being fearful of the person's position or their response. Um, I think about how like advice is not someone telling you what to do. Um, 
advice is considering and listening to another person in order to receive guidance or um, advice is recommendation that's careful in careful thought of future action. Um, and so we do need to be careful, you know, we need to be mindful and um, the scripture in Proverbs, Proverbs 18 two. again, I don't have it on slide, sorry, <laughs> but it says, fools have no interest in understanding, they only want to air their own opinions. Um, and that's like pretty deep, that's like, ouch, <laughs> I think it's a great self-reflection of, um, recognizing like you know okay where's my heart at again kind of going back to the heart i think that's important to set before actually um diving into the process of like asking advice but even when you are in a position where you're asking advice i think you got to be honest with yourself in the moment too allow yourself to feel what it is that you're thinking and feeling and be honest about that and being humble and vulnerable but checking your heart to know like all right like if i'm just sharing what i think what i feel um you know, like, like the scripture, like I'm considered to, and looked out to be as a fool, you know, God says fools have no interest in understanding, but you know, they only want to voice their own opinions. And I think we got to be careful with that. Um, just as we see like how God <laughs> literally uses the word fool. And it's like, I don't want to be a fool. So we do need to be understanding. I think we need to be in all combination to everything that was, has been shared, just like humble and um, to be understanding is, is being humble too. Um, another scripture is Proverbs 18, seven, the NLT version. They're, they're all the NLT, by the way. Um, it says the mouths of fools are their ruin. They trap themselves with their lips. And so that's just, you know, another scripture that's like, wow, like these scriptures are powerful. They're like, geez, you know, like the mouth of fools are their ruin. And it's like asking, you know, yourself, like, you know, am I just saying what I want to, to say and like, that, that's it and not hearing or getting help with the way you're thinking or, you know, um, I feel like this goes in relation to just even the scripture Emmanuel shared about like, um, sorry, shared about like how people can go after what their itching ears want to hear and just share what they're sharing and saying what they're saying and wanting that form of like um, approval of what they're already saying and feeling. Um, and I think, amen, our, our feelings need to be validated, but we still need to be humble through it. You know, we still need to consider others and um, understand and, and seek to, to, to kind of weigh that out together. And we'll talk more about weighing it out. Um, and when we're being prideful like all this really if we're not being humble it's it's we're being it's pride so when we're being prideful it's i know better you know it's that attitude of like maybe you're not actually saying i know better because that kind of sounds awful <laughs> if you're like on the phone with someone or you're with someone face to face like no one's really just gonna say like oh i know better but like sometimes we can phrase things in a way that is basically saying that and i think we need to check our hearts and really reflect on like what we're even thinking or how to even be mindful of our words. Um, Cause really what we should be thinking is God, you know, better, you know, better than I and really being humble and willing to sort that out to understand where the other person's coming from to be able to get help with like processing um, the advice even that's given. Yeah. Amen. Um, and, and so I think another thing that advice is not, it's, it's not misjudging the quality of advice, right? I think, um, and what do I mean by that? Because I think that there are two sides to this coin, right? Because um, it's easy to judge someone's advice, um, especially when it's directed towards you. But I think you also want to go to trusted advisors, right? Um, so I don't, I don't just go to any, any Joe Schmo, you know, to go get advice, right? I go to people that I, that are trusted, that I know is going to tell me, you know, um, is going to point me back to the scriptures. I go to people that I know that love God deeply, um, love the scriptures. And I know that they're going to tell me the truth, right? While loving God, uh, while loving me like God loves, right? Um, and so I think, I think that's important. <laughs> Caleb's Joe Schmo. <laughs> no, Caleb's Joe and Mark is Schmo. So <laughs> anyway, um, 
no, but I, I think, I think that's, that's important, right? You want to go to people that, like we said, aren't going to tell you what your itching ears want to hear, but people that are trusted, right? People that do, um, are going to give you wisdom, right? Um, that are in the scriptures can point you back to the scriptures. Cause at the end of the day, that's where you want, you know, your, your advice to come from you, where you want to be directed to is the scriptures. Um, and so, so you got to ask yourself, are the people that you're surrounding with or the people that you're going to, do they point you back to the scriptures? Right. Um, and while it's important to go to wise people, you also don't want to misjudge someone's advice. Right. And I think, I think we could do this inadvertently almost like, okay, that's not really, that wasn't really good advice. Right. Like, or like whatever, you know, kind of like passing judgment already. Um, but I think, you know, I, I just say this because you got to be aware of it, you know, for yourself too, is a lot of times if you have a prior issue with someone or, you know, if, if you're naturally someone that is mistrusting um, and you go to, let's say the person you have an issue with for advice, studies actually show that you're more likely to think that that advice was not good just based off of that preconceived idea that, 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 um, that inner, the, the, the past hurt you have. Right. And so you need to be aware of your own biases when getting advice, right? That's so important. Um, because then you're going to go in, you're going to go talk to this person. Oh, they're not going to get me right. You're like already thinking all these different things. Um, and that's going to actually change the way you receive the advice from them as opposed to, okay, I'm going to have a humble heart. I'm going to be open and receptive to whatever they say. Um, and I think that's where the humility comes in, right? And so, so this kind of flows into what advice actually is, right? And advice, and I know we've mentioned it before and earlier, is that advice is being humble, right? When you are, when you are getting advice, um, you want to be humble, right? That's, that's key. Um, you know, the, the humbler you are, the more receptive you'll be to what the actual person's saying, um, the, the God will bless that in the end, right? I know we talked about that too. Um, so I won't, I won't pound on that point, but I do think that being humble is, is the start of it, right? You, you can't get advice without being humble first. But I think tied into that, if you're being humble, you're going to be quick to listen and slow to speak, right? I think a lot of times when you're getting advice, and I've, I've, I have to catch myself in this too, is that I'm very quick to defend myself, right? I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 no. This is what I meant. You know what I mean? Like, or try to like, you know, correct something um, that doesn't necessarily need correcting, you know? And I need to be careful with that. Um, I, I'm reminded of the scripture we, we read before in Proverbs 12, verse 15, that says, the way of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice right? We need to be quick to listen. We need to listen to the advice that's being said to us. We can't just, you know, hear it and let it kind of flow in one ear out the other. We need to sit, we need to like marinate in it, you know, and, and absorb it. And I think, uh, I think that's important, you know, because I know for me, something that I do is, um, or I try to, I try to do and put in practice is that um, when I get advice from somebody, you know, even if I, my initial thought is like, okay, I don't really agree with this um, or anything. I'm going to like that moment. I'm not going to try to defend it. I'm not going to try to like, you know, retaliate or anything like that. I'm just going to listen. I'm just going to listen. I'm going to try to absorb it. And then if I do have an issue with something that they said, I'm going to try to bring it up in another instance, you know, like after I've thought about it and prayed about what they said to me, you know, like, okay, this actually, Hey bro, this, you know, made me feel some type of way actually you know like um because i think i think it's important to to really listen to what god wants you to hear you know um as opposed to jumping to defending right i think that's showing that you think that your way is right as opposed to what maybe god may think uh you should do you know um now rachel's going to come in and, and share on this point too Hi. Okay. So some practicals with considering and, um, is practical number one, um, 
you can, sorry, you can share vulnerably before conflict, conflicts escalate. <laughs> so being like putting that in practice is just really being humble. Um, and when seeking advice is like, um, with weighing it is, is just being vulnerable before it can become something maybe even more frustrating or builds up and, and just that's the way you know the enemy likes to work against us because he, he wants to steal kill destroy and divide and so um i think being vulnerable is what can help you and um practical number two work towards forgiving um you know i think it's important to address like the things you are feeling um but then working towards okay forgiveness and remembering jesus and um remembering how jesus forgives us and he'll use the same measure of the way um we forgive others onto us and ourselves um point number three continue to practice being vulnerable not just to people in general but like to those close closest to you because those are the relationships that love like satan loves to attack you know like the family your really close friends um like when it starts to really deepen those friendships, like after getting to know people, like it, it can be really rough and you can face like challenging conversations. So just continue, continue being vulnerable with those close to you too. Point um, number four, practical number four, strengthen your relationships with the trusted people so that they are going to better help you, give you the best advice since they know you. Um, Proverbs 27, 6 reads, wounds from a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. Okay, point number five, or practical number five, there is good, better, best. <laughs> so you can always just ask yourself, like, when you're dealing with the situation, like, okay, is this good? Okay, maybe yeah, this could be good, but is there a better option, you know? And maybe within that, the two trying to figure out how to balance the both, maybe there is another third option that we never really thought of or could have came up on your own. But like when you do seek advice and input from others, um, there, there's like that third option. It's like, wow, I didn't even know that that could be a possibility. And then it, it becomes being like the best, you know? So I think really considering that there's good, better, and best. Amen. Um, and so just to kind of wrap it up um, with these last two really quick, I think like Rachel was saying and, and everything, um, you know, you want to um, consider obviously who you're talking to and everything and all these different, you know, biases, but you want to weigh the advice, right? Take in what you heard, listen to it, right? Like I was saying, consider it, um, you know, let it marinate, um, but you want to pray about it. You know, I think um, that can be the biggest part, you know, it's just being, it's just praying. And I think it shows that you're thinking about it and it shows to God that you're, um, processing what's going on, you know, and that you want to give it to him. Um, cause at the end of the day, the decision is between you and God. Um, and obviously if we want to really please God. We want to know what he wants. Um, and I think that needs to be our, our focus with it. And so I think if you guys, if we can, um, let it engage our hearts when you get advice, engage your heart and engage your life um, with, with the advice. I think we'll be all a lot humbler. We'll learn a lot quicker. We'll grow so much faster um, as a campus ministry. So thank you guys so much. Um, that's all we have for you.